Hey, hey, what's going on everybody? Alex with you here again as usual. Thank you for dropping by for yet another chess video. This time it's the, well, it's the anticipated video, the anticipation to which hopefully I've been able to create with the uploading of my short video, what, five days ago or so. So if you haven't had the opportunity, go check that video out. This video is gonna be super exciting because in this video we're gonna be taking a closer look at the Chestnut Air digital chess set. We're gonna go ahead and open this chess set, take a look at what's inside, all the accessories, uh, hopefully be able to try the board out. Today we're also gonna be looking at some of the accessories that you uh, also have the opportunity to purchase separately for this particular board, one of which will be this awesome, awesome bag. And also we'll be looking at this uh, metal phone stand as well as two flannel bags for your chess pieces, uh, also an accessory that you can pick up on the website that I'll hit you guys a link below. So the company that's actually making this chess set actually reached out to me. They were asking to see if maybe I could do a review of this particular chess set. And I was like, yeah, for sure, you know, why not? And so they're really cool, uh, very responsive, super ambitious. I think what this company is probably going to start to expand the same way that Square Off did. I have a really good friend in Europe, uh, Hank. Hank, how are you, man? And that actually told me first about this particular board. So I went out online and I started looking at all the different things that this board has to offer. And I was uh, kind of uh, surprised because I thought, wow, you know, the board might be pretty cool in and of itself, but the it's the things that they're doing with the board that was kind of really clever and really, really the next step to electronic chess boards, so to speak, because uh, there were some some little nuances they were saying like if you're doing a learning experience type of thing that they will actually like you'll be able to make a move and then they'll actually highlight on the board which which move the program or the board thinks should have been a more of an ideal move so it, it kind of helps by teaching you tutoring you so things things kind of going the next step Without further ado, let's go ahead and we'll take a look at this chess set. But before I do so, I've got a good friend that I also want to say hi to. Uh, it's Patsito. Patsito, if you're watching this video, hey man, how are you? Patsito is a good friend of our family. His family recently moved up north for work. So Patsito has been a great fan of mine. He's been watching a lot of my videos. So Patsito, wherever you are, hope you're doing well. Okay, so... Keep watching those videos, man. Wish you the best. Anyway, so let's go ahead and let's unbox this. Take a look at what's inside and uh, go from there, okay? Okay, so here we are starting from, I've got this weird angle that we'll be filming at, but here we are. Got the main board. Let's take a look. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just sort of uh, put my nail underneath there. As, as short as my nails are, I probably can go ahead and get this done. I've been meaning to do this review actually like uh, earlier this week, but this week was actually first day of school was yesterday for the kids. So this first day for the first time for my, for my daughter and, and uh, it's been a big transition. So everything around the house has been kind of hectic. If your kids or your grandkids are starting school, congratulations. It's really exciting. Here we are. We got the box. Kind of a nice, nice little box. Uh, chestnut, chestnut air digital chess set. Really cool. Let's see what's inside. Alrighty. Chestnut product description that we see right over here. I'm gonna kind of, this is the very first thing that you notice. You can play with the PC or Mac. Hopefully you guys can see it from where you're sitting. Um, my concern is always you guys can't see the details. You can play with iOS. Android devices such as iPads or like an Android phone, maybe maybe even Android tablet, I guess. Or you can play over the board games. And I'm guessing when you play over the board games, if you have somewhere where you can hook this up to, it'll probably store your games in memory, which is what we would ideally strive for in over the board game type of scenarios is, I mean, because if you're playing over the board game, you could play on pretty much any chess set. As long as it's able to record your games for you, that's the most important thing. Because, like, I've got a, a good buddy of mine, Larry. Larry, if you're still watching these videos, man, hope you're doing well. Let's play some games in the future. But, yeah, Larry comes over every once in a while, and we, uh, we, uh, we play some games. By the way, Larry, hopefully, at some point, will come over here. He's a big chess player. Maybe we'll do, a, like, a... A video together with him which is what I've been wanting to do 
On the back side, we got an on and off. This description shows you how to turn it on and off. Long press, long turn it off. Short press to enable Bluetooth. Okay, so we got that new game, reset, buzzer, USB. I'm gonna probably have to like turn the camera off and, and start study all this, but basically you got the description that tell you what the lights indicate. You got the power light, the status light, uh, the Bluetooth light. And then on the side, it shows you the diagram of what the board looks like on the side. So, and it also also shows you, you know, all the lights and everything. So that's kind of cool. That's really handy. I'm going to keep that around. I'm not going to throw it away. The inside, now we've gone through the first page. We've got a little USB-C cord. I'm guessing this is like a USB-C charging cord. A lot of the chess sets that you purchase, some of like the DGT and stuff, sometimes you'll notice that they're still using the micro USB and a lot of the newer devices are now moving into the USB-C cords, which is cool as well. A little, little dry pack uh, to keep everything nice and dry. And, and, and now we got two little baggies right over here, two little baggies with your chess pieces. Let's take a closer look. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Look at these little plastic chess pieces right over here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just empty it out right now. Yeah. Size wise, these pieces are probably going to be around the same size that the Square Off Kingdom chess set is. But I feel like because these pieces don't really need to be automatically moved around the board then um, the, what's important in this situation would be like the, the the diameter of the base even for smaller pieces I always say this in, in a lot of my other videos the what's important to me is to make sure that you got a nice good diameter of the base regardless of how tall the pieces that way at least you don't run the risk of the pieces just toppling over so we got the light pieces let's open up and see what the dark pieces look like Okay, so the light pieces weren't like ivory white. They were sort of, as you can see, they're kind of like yellowish, tan, creamy looking white. And then the, as far as the dark pieces, the dark pieces aren't completely black. They're actually kind of a, this sort of a mahogany brown type of look, which is also kind of nice. I like this brown as, as opposed to like a, a different type of brown, because this brown is more like a purple brown. And I know you guys probably can't see it, but I'll show these up close. This is more of like a purple brown type of look, which is also really nice. As you could see, you get a total of four queens as per usual. And the rest of the pieces, yeah, you get just a normal set of, of chess pieces. So we'll be able to take each individual piece up closer. So let's set the pieces aside and we'll take a look at the most important thing, which is the, the board. Now the board size here it's gonna be smaller than your usual like 2.25 standard tournament size. This is gonna be more along the lines of what was offered before in like the video of the Square Off Kingdom chess set. Pieces are gonna be smaller, squares are gonna be a little bit smaller, but I believe from what I was reading online that this company is probably going to be moving forward and making, uh, here we go making a bigger board here in the future. And so now we have this like little orange ribbon here, everything, the packaging is pretty cool, I, I like it. So just kind of pull on this ribbon so you don't have to mess with anything. And voila, comes out the board. Board's actually kind of on the heavier side, so we're gonna go ahead and unbox it and take a look. As far as the rest of the box, that's it. Just got the ribbon left. I think the ribbon's just sort of attached to the box alrighty oh wow well, this is this is nice this is very slick it's a it's a nice looking board overall wow that's a really cool one here's the here's the side of the board I'm not really entirely sure if we're gonna be able to we'll take a look at this board closer this is really quite nice nice board overall as you could see you have the, the notation on all four sides. You have the one through eight, and then eight through H. So it's a nice, slick, and very, like, 
I think it's like compact, but at the same time, it's not like super small. Cause we've seen some chess sets that were like the, the uh, travel chess sets. Those are kind of small, but this one is nice. I feel like this is nice both for playing games, but also for like analysis, especially for analysis. Because I mean, if you're sitting there and you're trying to analyze some of your old games or you're trying to just learn from other people's games, uh, this is a perfect size because uh, this this table that I have right over here it's not big and if I'm playing like the square off pro rollable chessboard it occupies the entire table pretty much like there's just some space but there's just not enough space for my pieces so I have to put my pieces on the floor but this is good because you could a board like this a little bit smaller as you could see if you're in a situation where you you don't have a lot of space but you also potentially might need to set your like laptop right next to this so that you can both see the game and also see the board this would be kind of a perfect scenario because that way it's it, everything kind of works as far as space so let's set this board up take a look we'll turn it on and see how it functions let me start off by measuring the board for you guys so the board's going to be 13 inches by i'm guessing 13 yeah it's 13 by 13 inches and if we take a look at the square size the square size is about one and a half inches uh, and by one and a half inches approximately. Let's see. Let me just double check that. Maybe a little bit smaller actually. Let's let's go from here. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's it's almost it's almost one and a half inches. Just a little bit smaller, but I feel like overall the size is is, is pretty good. Uh, like I said, it's not that small. And then as far as the, the size of the thickness of the it's slightly over. It's like three quarters three quarters of an inch in thickness if that's relevant or necessary for anybody to know but those are going to be the dimension of the board i haven't turned the board on but as you can see the pieces themselves occupy a relatively good uh, amount of space proportionately they're not too big for this particular board i'm always one of those sticklers that you know to me it's very important that pieces don't like kind of protrude too much outside of the squares otherwise it would be kind of difficult to play but pieces are really meant to go on this board as far as the shape and the color and everything kind of goes well together so well, let's go ahead and we'll take a look at the board and see if we can turn it on and see what it's capable of okay so the only the only interface that you get on this particular board is this little side side uh, metal plate right over here and then we have the on button this plus button we have this reset i'm guessing it's reset because it looks like a little circle that recycle circle a little speaker looking thing or maybe a microphone chestnut logo usb c uh and then three indicators power bluetooth and status so so everything's pretty straightforward got two little two little, little screws so let's go ahead and we'll we'll turn this on um i did a short button so let's press it long press here we go so i did a long press and now all the buttons so i pressed that for what about maybe four seconds or so you got the on button so it's been previously charged by the way it's currently working on the battery so we'll have to test the battery life to kind of let you guys know about how long that would last but you got the power on indicator right over here i'm guessing it's looking for a usb connection and the status is green so let's go ahead and if I can maybe use my phone um, to plug this in and see where it takes us, okay? Okay, so as indicated in the instructions, one of the ways that we can connect to this board is directly from our Android phone. And an Android phone is what I have. So I'm, I went to chestnuttech.com and I'm going to try to figure out a way that we can go ahead and uh, download the app to my phone and also um, connect it. This is also the website where you can go to the shop and you can watch the video and learn more about this particular board. Like many of the other companies, for example, Square Off and DGT, Chestnut is currently in the stages of trying to develop more chess sets and basically broaden its popularity base among chess players. So they're actually currently offering quite some incredible deals as well as they've asked me to see if I could affiliate with them, which I have. And therefore, I will leave you guys a link below. So if you're interested in maybe looking further into possibly acquiring a board like this for yourself or for as a gift for somebody, be sure to click the link below. That way, if, if you do make a purchase, 
then uh, a very small fraction of the proceeds will go towards helping this channel grow which is hopefully what it's all about you guys continue watching these videos so you guys are enjoying them and if we could see this channel grow then hopefully we can see the frequency of chess videos grow as well but anyway so be sure to use the link below and as far as if you get a code prompt to insert a code put Alsu chess in there just the same way without any spacings and hopefully that will offer you a 10 percent discount so Hooray, hit that like button if you enjoyed this video overall and if you like the discount. I always love discounts. So let's have a look. I'm going to go ahead and just proceed with this website and see if I can download the, the application straight on the phone. By the way, right now might be a great time to open up some of these accessories that I have acquired alongside with the board. One of which is going to be this metal foam stand, which might come useful right at this moment where we're going to be looking at how the application is working. Uh, so you got this extra little bit and you get these two little flannel, I guess velvet flannel something um, Two little pouch bags. Hopefully we'll be able to take a look that sort of on top got these two strings that you pull pull like this each way and that way uh, You put your chest pieces in here. They're not really big, but I'm guessing um, their size being compact is just enough for the pieces so that's kind of cool got the chestnut uh, logo on each one of them. That's really nice to have because um, Alongside with the actual board you're not getting any way of storing the pieces. So that's good that they're Including this uh, probably would make sense maybe to just include the little flannel bags together with the board, but um, If you buy the little separate phone stand, you'll get the two baggies, which is cool Here's the metal phone stand kind of comes in all folded up so that's kind of cool. Got the little chestnut logo over here. That's really, really, really slick. Yeah, you set it up on the table. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. So it just kind of stands like this. It's really, really kind of almost difficult to move around, but that's what kind of makes it cool because you can set any particular angle you want and then you can set either your phone like this or maybe you want to set something else. Uh, like a tablet uh, and an iPad or something and then it, because of how strong it is I feel like it's gonna be able to look at this it, it so that little phone stand you can put it at a really high angle like this or you can keep it at a lower angle depending on what type of viewing angle you wish to achieve it, you know it depends on where you're sitting maybe if you're sitting in a, one of those tall bar chairs and you've got a a little table that's like a little bit below you you might want to switch it up to where you can see from high up but it's nice because it doesn't really move around because the, un the underside of the of the stand got these little sort of rubberized the pads that prevent it from sliding around and then similarly where the hooks are for like holding the phone also has all padded and stuff so your phone once it kind of goes in here feels snug now my phone has a, a pretty large fat case on it from Otterbox, so it doesn't like slide in all the way, but but I can see that it still is able to be held in place pretty nicely. In fact, I'm gonna use this holder from now on wherever I'm, even when I'm playing the square off board. So I, it's a nice holder. It's really quite nice. It's sturdy too. Okay. Anyway, so let's go ahead and take a look. I'm gonna show you guys what the phone is doing up close. I got the app from the website now because I'm getting the app from the website and not like from Google Play Store or something it it prompted me that I'm getting a, a, an app installed on my phone that's not secure that potentially could be a virus I tried doing the same thing with the app for my MacBook and it, it told me the same thing basically you have to go to your um, settings on either your phone or your tablet or wherever there has to be settings which will allow you to install third-party applications so it's not as straightforward but anyways here we are I got the app and when I turn the app on uh, chestnut right over here hopefully you guys it, it shows me that uh, we just turned it on so it says here you can connect your board from here okay next step uh, should we connect our board? I guess so. Let's go ahead and connect our board. While using this app, we're going to try to connect the board. Allow chestnut access to... Oh, goodness, sorry. I don't really like it to allow access to... Okay, connection failed. Well, let's try to turn the board off, and we're going to 
tried to find the board again. I'm gonna turn it back on to where the blue light was, the USB light was. Okay, um, reconnect. That's fine. I just press reconnect, so and now it's looking. I'm guessing the connection is, is it gonna, oh, it connected, connecting. Interesting, okay, well, it's, it's connected. A battery life, it shows you the battery life on this. It doesn't show you percentage wise, but it shows you the battery life, the firmware, and I, it didn't prompt me to like, which board do you want to connect to? It just sort of found it, so the connection was relatively automatic. I'd be interested to see if I can like, be connected with my phone, and then what would happen if I brought another appliance and tried to connect at the same time? Are we going to have a connection failure? Like. Because, I mean, the square off was, I think, doing the same stuff. It's kind of all automatic, but when I'm connecting to a USB device, usually it prompts, like, which device you want to connect to. So here it just did it automatically. What if I have two of these boards? Like, how does it know which one to connect to? I don't know. I'm assuming they assume that you're not going to have two boards right next to each other. But So we got that connected. It says here, play a game. You can play either online, which has a little lock on it, or you can study, which also has a little lock on it. You can play a game with a computer or your friends. So let's just play a game. We want to play a game with a computer, variant standard or 960. Uh, we use white or dark. We have the difficulty levels from one to level eight. Um, time control, 10 minutes at a second. So you can just go ahead and do all that. Why don't we just, just do it? Why don't we just start the game? So now that we've started the game, and I really hope that we can see, I'm guessing that I'm going to be playing as white. Okay, so for, the, so for the sake of simplicity, I just put the phone here uh, on the table so that way it will be on the same plane as the board. And it's going to be easier for us to see what's going on. Okay, so I'm guessing I'm playing as white. My time's already been going for about 2 minutes 30 seconds or so. It says here 7.33. Let's go ahead and make a first move. We're just gonna move here. Okay, so you don't need to click. Um, you just pick up the piece and go. Yeah, so uh, that was nice. Kind of a similar way, it didn't, it didn't beep or anything. So that, that was kind of cool. Let's go ahead and uh, move this piece. Very good, looks like it's moving pretty quick. So let's do the Rui Lopez. Um, Okay, so not the best move, but then again, I think I've selected level level one. I'm just going to go ahead and take this piece, see what it's doing. Okay. Relatively straightforward so far. No confusion there. Uh, opened up. Let's just go ahead and do this. Okay, so um, how far? We, we're going all the way here. Um, now, this is a standard game against the computer. That's why and there's going to be really no thought process and I'm not really thinking because I'm making the video, obviously, so... Yeah, okay, some random moves for sure, so... We'll go ahead and... Okay, okay, so this is, this is, this is quite, quite random, quite random, okay. Um... Wonderful! But as you can see, the, the board's, uh, you know, it's acting quite, quite nice and quietly. There's no, there's no craziness. Okay, what? What? It went down. It didn't even take my queen. It, it went down to this square. That's wonderful. That's gorgeous looking. Okay. I'm guessing this is what level one would do against the computer. Um, is the opponent now thinking? Or did the opponent make a move? Nope, it's thinking. It was thinking for a second there. Okay. Uh, so I'm guessing let's just do some kind of a do some kind of a number. Can we just go ahead and deliver something? Okay, right here. Check, check. It made a little beep, so it went here, and then we'll we're just gonna go here. We don't want him to start going around and taking my stuff. Well, you see how this works, basically relatively straightforward. So let me see if we can connect online, maybe through chess.com or something, and then see if we can 
see if we can play a game there. In this particular experiment, real quick before I get into the online games and the capabilities of those games, I wanted to see if we can just set up random pieces on the board as you can see here. Pieces have been set up in their spaces, but the pieces themselves are different. So as you can see, pawns are on the first rank and all pieces are all over. We wanna see what, what the board's gonna be doing. Is it gonna be playing normal game or is it gonna be... So, okay, start the game. Ah, ah, look what it's doing. Do you see guys, the, uh, the, the, the computer basically is telling me that my pieces are out of place. So let's do that. Let's, uh, let me take the, uh, the king here and let's put the queen here. What's it gonna do? Oh, up, oh, queen came. What if I take the queen and put the uh, knight in that place? Up, oh, queen is missing. What if I put the, up, oh, look at that. It basically tells me, look look at the screen guys, look at the screen here, that my pieces are not in the right place. Except for this piece, I don't know what it's doing. Let's take a look. This is one of the things that was kind of important when I... Ah, it's because the white is playing right now. That's why I was like wondering, was like, what's happening with that pawn? But look at this, look at this. It's uh, basically telling me that my pieces are out of place, that it's doing full piece recognition. See, as long as I didn't put the right piece on there, so it tells me that that piece is missing, which means that individual pieces inside here have individual chips that recognize the pieces as being for what they are, not just like random pieces which is really cool because here's what we're gonna do for this particular test, okay? So we're gonna set all the pieces back, okay? And as we set the pieces back, you could tell that what's going on is, look, all the pieces are getting placed back. Now, the white has went, this is a computer's move, okay? C com computer went with the, uh, the, queen's, the queen's pawn. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to try to cheat the system, I'm gonna pick up the queen's pawn right here, and I'm going to put the king, queen right here. Look what it's doing. It tells me that it's an illegal move, so it's not recognizing my pawn. I took the pawn off the board, so it says that, put the pawn here. Look, now it went. So that means that each one of the individual pieces is now recognizing itself as being a specific piece. So that's already a step up. I feel like every electronic chessboard should be doing that. So that way you cannot confuse the board, which is, I'm, I'm really thrilled about that. Now, in order to play online games, you do have to go here on the side and you had to sign in. So I did, uh, when it signed in, I created the account. It was really simple. All you needed is to input your username and to input your email address, provide a password, that type of thing. A very, a very, very easy process. Once I've created my account, all of a sudden, the study and the online things have now are now available to me so we're gonna hit online now it says online what do you want to do when I hit that it says Lee chess or chess.com so I'm gonna go ahead and do chess.com and it's telling me that basically now I gotta log in through chess.com so let me do that real quick okay I logged in through the through the program through the chestnut um, air program but it led me right into chess.com which is kind of cool so like this the integration was relatively seamless it brought me right to this uh, so we're gonna go ahead and just go ahead and get started yeah so so far really works pretty well I wonder if this particular player is working just from his from his uh, uh, computer or are they actually using the chestnut app but this is really cool This is very, very nice. I mean, I, I have to say that um, who's making, let, let's, let's, let's stay quiet for just a second. Is it my? Okay. I think it was my phone that was making the, the sounds. So that's really cool overall. I'm pretty sure that it's just playing somebody directly from like online. That's really, really awesome. 
So I'm not going to play the full game for you guys. You guys are just going to get bored with me playing some mediocre game. But I just wanted to show you guys that if you wanted to play online, it's really, really cool. Basically, oh, you see that? Look at that. It shows me what the opponent made as their last move. Did you guys see that? It kind of blinked a little bit. Yep, it's blinking. So it tells me in case I'm like lost and trying to figure out what was the last move. How about we play a game over the board and see how that works. So computer or friends. So we'll click friends. Standard, real time, uh, so start the game. How does that work? Let's take a look. We're gonna go f start from here, here, here. Let's just do like a standard open game. So far, no glitches. You guys see, so far, no glitches. I mean, I'm I'm moving these pieces pretty quick, right? Sort of. And we can see that it's 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 got a a really really overall pretty seamless way of doing this. I mean, what do you guys think? Let's see. We're just gonna move here, and then. What we're we gonna do. Let's do it like this. There we go. So far, you can see that it's it's really not you know it's it's not getting in the way of 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 us being able to. No, actually, this is what we're gonna do. We're just gonna go from here to. Oh no, we can't. Forget it. We're just gonna continue on. Okay. So. So far, we've been playing pretty quick. I mean, how quick can we play? What what? Let's just do some random moves. Let's see how quick can we play. Oh, look at this. Maybe I got my mixed up somewhere. Let me see. Hold on. Whose move is it? My move? Okay. Their move. How quick can we play? Ah, see, if the player goes again, it's going to show up in red. That player's not supposed to be going right now. When you pick up a piece, cool. So so it's pretty quick. I mean, what do you guys think? That's how quick can you play on this board? You guys can see. I mean, it's not glitching or anything, so that's pretty quick. Ah, I was supposed to go with black first. Nope. Uh, yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't go that way. That's why it it, it blocked me. Okay. So that's quick. I mean, you can be playing a game like Bullet or, or Blitz or, you know, Hyper Bullet. It's pretty quick. Even though the pieces are small, you could still play a pretty decent game with it, right? I mean, the response rate is fast. Alrighty, so I didn't mean to drag this video out with all the showing you guys of the game. Didn't want to make this video too technical or too boring. But I do realize that this board, in fact, is capable of of connecting to a lot of third-party applications which is really quite awesome so what do you guys think I mean I'm, I'm, I'm actually very surprised by this board it's it, everything is kind of working very seamlessly and from what you guys have seen I mean the board doesn't mess up the board doesn't glitch at least so far everything's straightforward the app I downloaded the app just like this, there's not any of like, oh, I can't connect to this board or I can't figure out what's going on. So far, I have really no bad things to say about this board. The fact that it's a little bit smaller than some of the other boards that we've seen before actually isn't necessarily a bad thing because as we're going to see here shortly, you do can have the opportunity to obtain this carrying bag, this little travel pouch for this board. And together with the travel pouch and the board and the pieces actually creates a really nice, very mobile package. Because if you strive to get a board that's non-foldable, that's a full size or tournament size, I mean, you're looking at carrying something that could potentially be very large and burdensome, hard to move around, possibly if it's a big board and a bag like this, you might be banging it against the walls, walking in schools or wherever you're going. 
Think about the fact that this might also be played by not only adults, but people younger, smaller, like my daughter just went to school. And it's not super heavy, so I know that she can, if I put this all in a bag, she can carry it to school. Uh, so overall, I think the size factor is, well, it's good. It's, it's, it's a nice analysis size board, but it's also very, very much so a nice board to play with, uh, you know, with friends or wherever. Because if you look at the size and you compare this size of the board to, say, Square Off Kingdom set, the Square Off Kingdom board's uh, substantially larger and thicker because of all the moving, you know, pieces that are inside the board. But at the same time, the actual pieces and the actual squares are not that much different as far as size. So you get a much bigger board, a heavier board, something that's a little harder to move around. But in this case, this is very much so mobile. This is great. So, I mean, another thing that I do want to say, if the developers are watching this video, which they might be, I'm going to say, you guys, I'm impressed. You, that's a good board. I mean, it, it really, like, from what we've been playing, it's one of those things uh, where you, you really, like, can feel that this 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 product's been made by somebody who actually has taken the time to test the things out, to eliminate the glitches from the get-go, to really like run it through probably thousands of hours or hundreds of hours of playing to ensure that everything's going to be seamless. It's made by somebody where I believe the research and development on this product there's there's a lot of time that's been spent to make sure everything's going smoothly which is impressive when i see something like this and nothing's really glitching i can tell that the people that have created this board actually probably play chess and not like you know you get those games or something like a ping pong game for your phone and it's like oh why is it glitching so hard because the people that created this game probably never pay, played ping pong in their life and you know this is the complete opposite this I feel like is really like great I mean I'm happy with it I'm, I can't wait to test it out more and hopefully I'll be able to make another video for you guys where I can show you some of the other ways you can connect this board and maybe some of the things I'll learn while playing because today's pretty much the first day we just we just opened it up and like I said I'm pleased what do you guys think what do you guys think what Hank, what do you think if you're watching this video? I know Hank already bought himself one before I did. That kind of also, he was talking to me and prompted me to maybe get one for myself. Uh, you know, what do you guys think? Larry, Larry, if you're Larry's still watching my videos, what do you think? Maybe we can get another board and we can play kind of uh, together online with this. That'd be pretty cool. Patsito, you like this board? I like it. Pretty good, pretty good. Anyways, as usual, I'm super glad you guys stayed and watched this video. Be sure if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to hit that like button. I don't hit like buttons when I watch videos, but people do put the effort to making videos and making, you know, things that they can share with others. And if you benefited or if you found this video interesting, be sure to hit that like button so, so that other people can benefit from watching this video as well as it really helps out. And if you are like among the 90% of the people that watch my videos but don't subscribe, be sure to hit that subscribe button because that really helps too. I think I have like over 5,000 something people that routinely come and watch my videos but only like 1,700 subscribers which is which is okay but I know there's a lot of people that still enjoy them but just like me, I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to a lot of channels even though I know where to find those people and I will routinely come back and watch their videos. I don't know why I don't do that, but I think that what happens is sometimes when I subscribe to somebody and they post too many videos and it constantly like almost spams my my YouTube page with their new videos, then I'm like, oh, I should not have subscribed. But my videos don't spam, so hopefully be sure to subscribe. And uh, I'm going to play around with this. In the meantime, be sure to check out the link below, as I said. If you do buy the board, fantastic. If you buy it through the link that I sent you, and if you use the promo code, you'll get an additional 10% off. Let's take a quick look before we finish this video up with the board bag, see how everything fits. I'm gonna start by putting these pieces into their individual velvet bags. So, um, 
They're not big bags, as I've already mentioned, um, but I'm assuming that you should not have any trouble fitting all the pieces inside these bags. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at this. We had no trouble fitting them all in, so that's, that's really nice. And You have to have bags. You can't just throw them willy-nilly just about anywhere. But uh, the pieces are relatively light, but at the same time, it's kind of a, like a hard plastic, so... Uh, I don't necessarily think that you would be running the risk of breaking the pieces like some of the other concerns we had with some of the other boards and pieces where if the piece falls like oh you're gonna break it off here we go and now let's take a quick look at this awesome looking bag so you got a little velcro thing on top I hope it's still able to to see the, the bag the velcro thing kind of velcros together so that way the two straps are being held together when you're walking and it provides extra cushion here for your hand if you're walking long distances. Otherwise, you un, un velcro it and it allows you to open up the top. Where in the top, we see inside we have what I expected to have, which is they didn't leave anything behind. These people are really good. Um, got the little straps. Straps, heavy duty straps with the metal clips, not plastic, which is great. Uh, that basically hook on to either side of the... This is high quality stuff, guys. Yep, you got, you got the little strap. You got the little strap that you basically can throw over your shoulder and you can walk and, and carry it like a, like a satchel or like a, like a purse almost. You, you do have the little additional uh, metal clamp here or whatever you call it that you can make this smaller. Um, to the extent of maybe a smaller child or somebody is wanting to uh, carry this across, you know, carry it somewhere. Here we go. We can make it. We can make it uh, fit anybody's body style, really. Uh, inside, we have sort of sort of like a computer bag type of deal. We have this Velcro, and we have an internal pocket. Uh, it's probably based on the light. It's dark on dark. It's going to be hard for you to see, but take my word for it. It's kind of one of those like student backpacks where you have an additional Velcro closed-in pocket. This is, I'm assuming, where the board goes. In addition to that, you have an additional big space here that you can throw in your like notebook, your pencils, what have you, whatever you need to throw. On the outside here, we have a little Velcro pouch on the top. Just a simple Velcro pouch. I'm still going to be deciding on what, what to do with that pouch. We have a little uh, zip pouch. Now the zip pouch is also kind of a interesting little spot. I'm assuming the zip pouch might be for the pieces, but since I got the additional little accessory for the the carrying thing, I'm assuming the carrying thing is probably what you can yeah, look at that. The phone carrier you can just put in here, so that's cool. Um this shape-wise little compartment probably maybe a, a little uh notebook something. You can put pencils here, pens uh, what have you, plenty of space, plenty of space to accessorize your stuff. Let's just go ahead and, and drop this inside. Don't forget guys, if you're going to have this on the go, you might want to make sure you you put the... Uh, oh, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. Cool. Model number CA100, Chestnut Air. The bottoms, look at, look at, look at the bottom. Look, look how nice, this is really nice wood. This is a really nice wood. And that's one of the things I wanted to mention. This is wood on the top here is, it looks like wood, but, but this right, the, the very top here has uh, some kind of a, I guess like a hard plastic type of thing, which is what we would expect with this because underneath you have to have all the lights and everything. Something has to be placed inside there. So, but the outside part is wood and it's like I said, it's, it's made really nicely. And the color is nice. It's not like striking in your face type of thing. And like, in my opinion, the, the letters are really nicely made. The numbers, everything. The, the, the little knobs, the little LED lights, they don't pop out. So everything's nice and smooth, nice and smooth everywhere. So but let's pop this in. Um, kind of like you would with the school backpack. Here we go. Relatively straightforward. And then once you pop it in like this, it sort of has this sort of a rubberized thing and you just, all you do is, look at that. You popped it in and you, you, you can put it in and it's not gonna slide out, hopefully. 
keeps it nice and sturdy in there and it's protected by the inside which has kind of got the little padding on the outside and padding on the inside so if you're running around with this and this hits the side of a wall or something then it's a relatively padded it's padded on the sides it's basically keeping your uh, you know your chest set protected I'm gonna throw these into the main compartment although I might actually be able to just throw them in here yeah this works too I can just throw them into the outside compartment and and that way things don't take too much space on the inside everything lays flat this I don't know I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna put in here uh, probably the cords the charging cords and I'm gonna put the like the adapter in here since you you do get the cord you get the uh, the USB-C cord but uh, you don't get the adapter so and then there's another another space so there's like this main space here that we've seen and then there's this additional space here I mean this thing has like got a lot of little uh, got a lot of little compartments which is really cool okay so now that we got it all sealed up and we can just go ahead and close this and we're ready to go look at that a nice slick package that you can pretty much take anywhere with you. In the next video, hopefully, I will be talking about the expectation of battery life. How long does the battery last? Uh, what type of other applications we can use this? I'm going to play this board as much as I can, kind of really test it out, see if I see any, any potential uh, glitches or anything like that, and, and share the information with you. So hopefully, you know, if you guys are looking at something like this to, to buy for yourself or a friend, that way, maybe if you find this video informative, then I'm going to be happy, okay? Well, anyways, that's about it for this video, my friends. I hope you stuck around this long. And if you have, as always, thank you very much. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video, okay? Bye-bye.